Certain scholars claim that the Birmingham folios are the oldest known pages of the Quran, but even these fragments do not support the traditional story that Uthman collected and distributed the original Quran. Today we're going to talk about a, a very interesting find, a, a handful of folios known as the Birmingham folios that really um, you know, was highlighted by BBC and many other outlets as a groundbreaking discovery related to a manuscript that could have existed at the time of the Prophet of Islam, and the list can go on and on and on. But with me here, of course, to put the spotlight and the focus on this, these folios at more in-depth analysis is Dr. Jay Smith. Dr. Jay, thank you so much. Uh, for uh, agreeing to be here with us as always. And it's interesting, by the way, the Birmingham Folios was the first time I've ever interviewed you on my radio show because you did write a response at that time to this find. Yes, and it was all over the news. Mm -hmm. And of course, all over the news was, finally, we have a manuscript, a full manuscript of the Quran from the time of the Prophet himself. And they, they didn't call it folios. We're calling it folios. It was called manuscript itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's just go ahead and, and oh, oh, put a look to the slide here. Uh, there you can see Dr. David Thomas. He is a curator for the, the Birmingham Library. Mm -hmm. uh, Fideli uh, was the lady who found it. Alba Fideli. Yeah. Alba Fideli. She was there in the library. She came across another manuscript, and these two folios, just two folios, were sticking in the middle, and they didn't belong to that manuscript. So she pulled them out, and she took them down to Oxford, uh, to the Oxford Radiocarbon Dating Lab and got them radiocarbon dated. And of course, the dates that she got from the radiocarbon was 568 to 645. When you do radiocarbon, you don't get exact dates. You get about 100 years uh, breadth because it's so inexact, so inaccurate. And so when she came back with these dates, she told David Thomas, of course, this is what he said, and I'll quote him, the writer of this manuscript, see, manuscript, not folios, this manuscript, could well have known the prophet Muhammad. He would have seen him probably. He would maybe have heard him preach. He may have known him personally, and that really is quite a thought to conjure up with. Of course, this was all over the news. BBC did a headline on it on July uh, the 22nd, uh, 2015. Uh, so we're talking about a number of years ago when this came to the fore. Well, let's take a look. There is the entire Burning Him Manuscript. I've got it right there on the left. It's just front and back of two pages. Two folios is what we call it, front and back. That's all it is. That does not make a manuscript, does it? That's true. And, and I want to be fair, uh, uh, Yassin Dutton actually does reference three additional ones. Uh, I think if my memory serves right, either three or five, but it, it's still in, in numbers. We're talking about anywhere from seven to nine. Actually, Dorosh goes even one step further than that, and Shoemaker talks about it. Mm -hmm. Shoemaker says, well, Dorosh claims that these actually belong to the Petropolitanus manuscript. Oh, meaning like it's part of that collection. It's actually part of that collection. These are the f these two folios fit perfectly. Mm -hmm. They were taken out. How they got over to Birmingham, we don't know. But then remember, these were all interspersed when people were selling them in that's the right. Middle East. And that's why the libraries had to take what they were given. So these actually come from Petropolitananus is what they're saying. But this is the first time that they've been carbon dated, radiocarbon dated. In some ways, we're going to be segue into the radiocarbon dating now mm -hmm. using this. But I want to finish with the manuscript evidence with this as well. Now, remember, these are only 33 verses here. So 33 verses out of, out of in, in this case, from three different chapters, there are 6,236 verses in the Quran. So that does mm -hmm. not make a full manuscript. 33 out of 6,263 uh, is very small part, a small smidgen part of the entire manus of the entire Quran. 33 verses out of three chapters, 18, 19, and 20, there are 343 verses in those three chapters. This only makes a tenth of those. So that's even a small part right. of these three Half chapters. Half a percent of the Quran, one percent, uh, I mean, 10 percent of these three chapters. So, and it's chapter 18, verse 17 to 31. It's chapter 19, verse 91 to 98. And chapter 20, verse 1 to 40. So it's just a few verses with for, from in these three chapters. What's interesting is, take a look at these three chapters and look and see what's in these folios. Well, the first one in chapter 18 is the seven sleepers of Ephesus. That's from Syrian Bishop Jacob of Sarug, which was written in 512. That predates the Quran, does it not? Yes. That predates Muhammad, does it not? That story, yes. That predates also Islam, does it not? So right. this is pre-Islamic. The, the source material, yeah. Well, that story. Right. Is it? 
Sura 19, Ayah 91 to 98, is from the Proto Evangelium of James the Lesser. That is from 145 AD. That's the second century. Then reproduce again in the Pseudo Gospel of Matthew in 680. That all predates the Quran, predates Muhammad, predates Islam. And then chapter 20, verse 1 to 40, is the story of Moses that comes right out of the Old Testament. Well, that's been there since 1400 BC. So you can see these. All these stories that you see on this are all much earlier. Why are we surprised by this? By the time the 6th and 7th century come along, these would have all been written in Arabic because they've been transposed into Arabic for the Arab-speaking people. They are. It's, it stands to reason that they would have been around before they're put into Arabic. The fact that they are already separated and there's nothing else chronic around, around it, and the fact that the other parts of chapter 18, 19, and 20 are not in these folios suggests very clearly that these were separated separate from the rest of the Quran. They predate the Quran. So that's the first thing. So I don't have a problem with those dates, 568 to 645. 568 is two years before Muhammad was living. 645 is seven years before the Quran was canonized. Right. So you've got that difficult. Now let's just see what the scholars say, because the scholars do have a uh, reference. Here you have a, a Aileen Rezvan, and he says this, Birmingham fragments show several textual variants as well as verse numbering differences. The very early dating of all these fragments before the reign of Uthman cast doubt on both the Islamic tradition. The fact that the folios were kept for centuries in an iron box underground can partly explain the early radiocarbon dating. Now listen, I don't have a difficulty with radiocarbon, but he does. Parchments were, were an expensive material. Monastic and state scriptoria located on the territory of greater Syria, that's known as Al-Sham, Antioquia, uh, Al-Hira, that's way up in the north. These are all up in the north. And Alexandria areas, that's where the parchments were kept. That's where they were, that's where they were housed. That's where they were guarded could store this valuable material, including donations of the pious laity. These stocks became part of the loot captured by the Arabs in the first years of the conquest. The conquest, we well know, these conquests are happening in the, the, the late 7th, early 8th century. Captured leaves were used for writing the Quran. These captured leaves uh, were, means these parchments had been sitting there for quite a while before they were ever even used. So we don't even know if the dates for the carbon dating is what he's saying could be from uh, from when it was the ink was actually applied to it. You can't date the ink because inks come from pigments that come from many different places from many different years. Emilio Platti. Uh, says the Mingana 1572, which is the Birmingham folio, corresponds perfectly to the text of the Uthmanic Vulgate, pointing out differences with the Sana'a Codex, unquestionably the oldest manuscript, which therefore means that this Birmingham fragment is subsequent to the oldest manuscript. Let's see what else we have here. You have F, uh, you have uh, Alba Fideli, who is the one that discovered it. And she says, wait, wait, wait hold on a minute. She said that paleography gives an hypothesis. It is not exact, and carbon dating informs us only about the date of the death of the animal that was used for to make the parchment. The parchment, the leather, basically, not the ink. Assistant Professor Suleiman Burke, faculty member of the Yalova <coughs> University uh, Islamic Studies faculty in Turkish Islamic art history, himself a Muslim, <coughs> and collector Mehmet Gichebi, challenged Birmingham University, suggesting that it had found the world's oldest Quran, and this is what they say. This finding did not cause any excitement in me. It is clear that the Quran pages they have belong to the end of the 7th century and the beginning of the 8th century. We have seen many copies of the Quran written with that script in that era. That's called. So he's referring to the BNF, for instance, as an example. There you go. And now we now know it comes from the BNF, according to Durosh. The Turkish Islamic Arts Museum even has the largest collection of such transcripts. It is clear that the Quranic pages at Birmingham University and uh, the rest that we have belong to the same era. So it's very clear what they're saying is they don't even trust the carbon dating. I don't have a difficulty with the carbon dating because it, even if the carbon datings are correct, it still is pre-Islamic, pre-Quranic, and the stories are all from long before the Quran was put together. There's nothing Islamic about this, these folios. Now, that brings in the whole problem with carbon dating, and we've got to go to carbon dating. So that's what we're going to talk about next. And we're going to talk about specifically your manuscript, the Sana'a manuscript as a proof text. Thank you, and uh, everyone, hopefully you can join us next time. Until then, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. 
I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.